Hi guys. Hello. Hello. All right. So Leo, Leo's, excuse me, Aries, Aries, let's get into this for you guys and see what is the kind of like energy coming from the universe right now? What's the um, imagery that is popping up? What do we see here coming in from the universe? And we start out with the world in the reverse. This begins us with first off the concept that <sighs> something's not over. Um, there's unfinished business for our Aries. By the way, I always look at this like it's um, a cell. So I don't know if somebody's into biology or there's they're looking at something under a microscope or if there's uh, like somebody like science fiction or like I say, biology, human cells, animal cells, plant cells. But to look at something under a microscope and then see all the itty bitty moving parts, right? You know, we've got the nucleus and the ribosomes and, you know, there's, there's a lot going on in there, right? That there's something here that says, if Aries looks at something closer and maybe they're even being encouraged to look closer, put something under the microscope, something that isn't done yet, isn't over yet. And maybe it's because there's something else to understand, to capture, to see. Now, this Aries could have been dealing with a Capricorn, but I don't know that that's the way I would look at it. I would look at it as a segment of Aries life where there's something that they, it's not, it's not time to walk away from something yet because they've missed a really important component of some valuable piece of information. Now, if we were to look at this up close, we see the Milky Way galaxies within this cell. And we also see like this feminine who's kind of, you notice how she's got these flowers wrapped around her kind of like strands of DNA. Um, a little bit of that, you know, mimicking the double helix there. I'm just going to say that this is something for Aries to understand about themselves deep inside. There's some kind of truth. There's some kind of, like I say, the... Um, <clears throat> I think it's Neil Shubin who wrote a really great book. I think it's called The Universe Within. Um, I, I think there's there's also one called Inner Fish, and I could be merging titles. I own both of them. It's just been years since I read them, but it's definitely Neil Shubin, and it's really fascinating. Great writer, um, but it has much to do with um, archaeology and paleontology, and um, it's not a dry read at all. It's fabulous, but it just makes me think that someone is scientific minded, but they're, this is a character who is aware that there's something else of great value locked deep within maybe their, their DNA, something for them to understand about themselves. Two of swords could be about blockage, but in this case, it's more about either having the tools to cut through and see what the pattern is, and then decide what pattern not to imitate again, or maybe having the courage to change a pattern. You notice in this case, somebody's been snipping snowflakes out of paper, but it's very much about the pattern, the shape of something. Two of Swords is normally what we block without realizing it, but this is somebody who I think Aries is being encouraged to look at some behavior of their own and understand where it came from because they have a chance to make a new template. We have the five of swords and we have the two of cups. And again, I see like a lot of really important, um, highly patterned. Now, instead of seeing a snowflake, we see this lacy pattern. And then, you know, the edges of the, um, the tablecloth here are kind of mimicking the spiral of the Milky Way galaxy, but it also kind of looks like waves. Everywhere around this Aries, I feel like there's this energy of notice the patterns, notice the grand picture of things. And this could be about how Aries has dealt with relationships that are super meaningful. If they have dealt with somebody that is a profound and meaningful, say, a two of cups, this feels like a wedding. This feels like um, two people that are kind of meant to have that toast as they, you know, share some celebratory moment, but there's been a blockage here, a blockage of that tree of life, of the ability for this relationship to grow, even though the potential for it still sits there. This almost says for Aries not to walk away without 
recognizing some kind of pattern of behavior that either this person displays or something that is reflected even in Aries themselves. Maybe to a lesser degree, but they may mirror this person's um, blocking energy when it comes to having this beautiful union, because this union is still on the table. It's, it's still possible, but it would require seeing the backdrop of these patterns. Here's what I would say. It's almost as if, say, Aries has met a really incredible soul who matches them in a lot of ways, including matches them in, in negative ways. And if both of them have been, say, steeped in a template that, you know, this is how it goes, you meet this person, then you get married, and you have, you know, traditional wedding, and there's, you know, white gowns and tuxedos and the whole nine yards and champagne flutes. That's all well and good. There's nothing wrong with that. But it could be that that doesn't actually suit either of these characters, not really. Maybe their union, their bond would look very different. And that could be, they could actually bulk at the idea. Sometimes other people's, um, you know, say, say we're in a relationship <clears throat> um, where our family expects us to do just what they did. But we watched our family do those things, get married stay married and they're freaking miserable. That could be a real source of like yuck factor for both Aries and this person. So when it comes to strong relationships that are supposed to lead to this moment, because this very much looks like a matrimony kind of, of moment here, at least an engagement, both of them may bulk at this and find a way to sabotage and block growing into this connection because they're like, oh God, if we get married, you know what? It'll go to hell in a handbasket. Because I remember, yeah, my mom and dad, ooh, they got married and wow, it was it was rocky. So I don't want to repeat that. I want to break those patterns. I don't want to do it this way. But here's the thing. The pattern could be that there's an avoidance of connections, deep, powerful, profound connections, because they don't want to set themselves up for failure and they perceive maybe this next step of marriage and things like that as, yeah, but you know what comes after that? Hell in a handbasket. So I don't even want to go down that road. I don't want to get married. I want to sabotage a great connection before I ever get to the point of, wow, I guess we're supposed to be married now. That's the pattern to look at. Is there a pattern of like running? Is there a pattern of blocking just when things are really, really, really good? Because the assumption is it's going to turn into a nightmare. If that's been a behavior, either for Aries or the person that Aries has dealt with, it's identifying that behavior. That's that's kind of the, the big message on this so far. Okay, this is a very different message than what the other Zodiacs have gotten so far. I've only done Gemini and Leo, and Leo's I can't release yet because it's not done processing, but it's interesting what incredibly different messages we have. Okay, so we've got the Knight of Discs in the reverse, and we've got the Knight of Swords upright. The next kind of message from the universe on this, and hi, everybody. Great to see you guys. Um, the, the next aspect of this is I, I feel like we have an Aries that is super intelligent, super active mind. They do like to perhaps break things down, understand things from a, like a, almost, even if they don't have a scientific background, they may be a, a natural observer, like a student of life, and they can't even help it. They break stuff down, they come to pretty rapid conclusions faster than most people do, and so Aries could struggle a little only because they're going to be able to connect dots faster than most people. So if they can jump to outcomes, conclusions, because they are swift to comprehend a situation and like um, be able to think outside the box on one hand, but see things other people would miss. This is a great observer. However, it says in this one instance, and this is kind of an odd message, the flip side of it is being able to jump forward, being able to look at things with a clinical eye. You notice we have like a physicist in their lab, but they're they're doing like five things at once, right? They're they're running like a spectrometry meter over here. 
Um, they are dissecting the human brain. They've got mathematical equations behind them. Like they're, they're involved in a lot of moving parts all at once. Everything is fast, fast, fast because their brain operates swiftly so they can think of a lot of different things all at the same time. This card is the reverse. This card, now we kind of delve into ancient knowledge and wisdom. We have like the Mayan or Aztec calendar. We have a temple that is built obviously um, to either harness energy from the solar system and bring it down to earth and channel it inward or to channel it outward to the universe. But there's ancient wisdom. There's a power symbol of the jaguar here. And this is slow moving energy. There's a lot to be said for moving with the rhythm of nature, um, not being too swift to jump to a lot of conclusions, but instead to look back in the further past and see what ancient intelligent civilizations observed and what their thoughts are. Because if we miss or we uh, fail to pay any attention to ancient wisdom, and this is maybe ancient wisdom that's locked deep within Aries in that first card that suggests that they have a lot of wisdom in their DNA. If they fail to pay attention to that, they could actually be missing some critical components. Right now we have an Aries that is coming to some interesting conclusions. They're acknowledging some patterns. They're acknowledging a really maybe cosmically important connection in their life and the things that are blocking it. But there's not some instant quick fix. Even though they're thinking that they understand everything, this hints at, wait, slow down. Slow down and maybe there's a little bit more here than, than even what Aries assumes they see. There's some kind of deeper, more like raw, um, inner pull that these two characters have, almost suggesting that Aries has something to learn from this partner. Even if Aries has figured out some pattern that their partner is displaying, Aries themselves has something that's going to be unlocked thanks to this partner. And they don't want to move so fast that they look for a solution to this and assume they know how everything's going to go because there's something here still hidden. There's This whole storyline keeps saying that Aries has something that's hidden about themselves that is already within themselves that they could tap into, some deeper knowledge, some deeper wisdom, something deep inside that maybe they've inherited. Maybe this is a character who has some ties to an ancient culture. Um, maybe they just simply feel connected to, like I say, Mayan, Aztec, Incan, um, it doesn't have to be, you know, a South American necessarily energy flow or Central American, but that's just what we see on the cards here. This could even be a connection to some form of shamanism, but it's kind of suppressed. And as cerebral as our Aries is, it says not to overlook this subconscious inherited power that they possess as well. It's a different kind of energy. Oh, look at this. Okay, so... I haven't done the upcoming Eclipse storylines yet, but I will. <laughs> that doesn't happen until April the 8th. But boy, this card is jumping us right into the Eclipse, isn't it? This could be that around April 8th, this Aries and this storyline will get some very direct um, and searing thought process and information that becomes very clear to them all of a sudden. This could be some wonderful upload or download, however we want to say it. This is the Two of Pentacles. I feel like this is going to be um, synonymous with Aries connecting to whomever their Two of Cups person is. I feel like there's going to be a tremendous breakthrough. But I think it comes from, I don't know, it feels like Aries and this person are both being activated. They, or this person activates something inside of Aries. It's not, I, I think that we're flipping the script a little bit. Aries was understanding somebody else's pattern without realizing they too have something to learn in this equation. And they're going to be energized or a light switch is getting flipped on. And it's thanks to the fact that their energy is interwoven to this person. If you look closely, what we actually see is from this, the plasma rays of the sun, we see it not only projecting into earth, but in the form of the... Um, I'm making the signal, I can't say the infinity symbol. Um, 
I just feel like there's some kind of interwoven energy with Aries and this, this individual. This is a much more important bond. This is a much more powerful bond. And they and their, their two of cups person are going to be like something is being flipped on for both of them. Prince of Cups. It could promote sudden action. And this could be Aries. Suddenly, whether Aries is masculine or feminine doesn't matter. They could suddenly feel like I must go to that person. It doesn't matter. Go by boat, go by plane. It doesn't matter. I must go. This, this is definitely energizing. And I think that it's because these two have some, how would I say it? They have a relationship that is as powerfully um, bonded as any orbit, right? But it, obviously, what we're seeing here is the orbit. There's a gravitational flow. We're locked in each other's vibe. But I feel like it's a perfect alignment of energy for Aries and this person. And I think it's going to hit in just the right way at just the right moment. And it's going to awaken something. Now, in this storyline, it looks like it's awakening something in Aries and promoting Aries to go right toward that person. This story could be read the complete opposite direction as well. To be completely honest, I don't know who's who. I've been reading it in one direction because it makes it easier to comprehend. And then if we want to invert the story, we can. But this simply looks like this is a very meaningful connection that's about to have a new wake up call. We got the princess of discs. You know, we see her out here planting, planting seeds. I feel as if there has been, you know, when we plant seeds and we, we just got to let them grow to a certain extent before we start to see that little green, um, you know, little tiny fledgling plant pop its little head up. I feel like this has been a connection where the seeds have been planted long ago, maybe lifetimes ago, but it's just now getting the right nutrient, sunlight, nourishment, and attention and awareness for things to really start to grow with this connection. We've understood the blockages of the connection. We've understood that something wasn't done, something wasn't over from a long time ago. We've understood why somebody shied away from it. We've understood um, that I have said Aries has some interesting ability to comprehend things, but there was more that was about to be revealed to the Aries. And in this storyline, it's that they themselves might become aware that, holy smokes, there, there is a tremendous bond here that has been growing all this time. And now it's, it's only just now ready to flourish. This has not been a relationship that was ever done, gone, or over. It was that they, they found each other too soon. It wasn't, um, it wasn't supposed to actually grow until this point in time. Now, does this all have to be about a relationship? It doesn't, but this storyline is. I, I can't help it. That's the only storyline that I see here. We have the hermit energy. Um, <clears throat> normally, a hermit is about going out on a journey. This is the end of a gigantic journey. This character has reached the tree of life. They have been listening to... Instead of like an oil lamp, I always think this looks more like a magical genie's lamp. We have had a long, slow journey to get to that moment in time, that tree of life, that that opportunity to say, wait a second, all this time I've been traveling through my life. I've been picking up pieces of knowledge. I've been slowly but surely being activated. I'm intelligent, but I've also just now realized some other profound truth, which is, I know where I'm supposed to be putting down roots and what kind of a tree of life I'm supposed to be growing. And I'm just now arriving. doesn't matter. This person has a gray, gray beard. This could be a connection that is blossoming for characters that are either their old souls or this journey has um, taken a long time. This could be characters that are in their 70s, 80s. And it's just now clicking into place. This could be two of cups that are coming into union that have been apart for lifetimes and are finding themselves much later in life or reconnecting much later in life. 
it doesn't matter. This is this is still um, only just now the right time is what this whole thing says. It's um, it's definitely a a powerfully activated message. I'm gonna get just one more card here. You guys, good to see everybody. Thanks so much for being here. We have nine of swords. Is there worry? Is there fear? Possibly, sure, because this is a huge culmination kind of a message. This is a, you know, it's like once I, I now know this, once I know the action I must take, now it's like, holy smokes, the energy goes off the charts, right? We got windmills spinning. We got all kinds of energy and it's like, okay, well, what's going to happen? I'm going to face those fears. I'm going to go with all of this dynamic action and activity. I feel like it's going to be a very active, um, if this is happening around the, the solar eclipse, it's going to be a very active energetic day after all. And things are going to change after that. We have a lot of really beautiful um, growth occurring, emotions being shared, um, purpose being pursued and followed. But it certainly comes with like, this is all going to feel pretty new because it's kind of like we were still stopped at a red light for a long time and now all of a sudden we got the green light and it turns out we it's not just our turn to go into the flow of traffic it turns out we're on like the autobahn and we're doing 90 we're doing 100 miles per hour kilometers per hour you know we thought we were just at a four-way traffic stop in a sweet little neighborhood no when we get this green light it turns out we go from what we think is going to be a calm little you know drive on a journey to like we are flying this is big energy. This is a big relationship. This is meaningful. This is big emotions flowing, but it's something that's been coming for a long time. It's a, it's a situation that was never missed. It was an opportunity that was never missed. It just wasn't ever going to be coming into fruition until this point in time because some growth had to still occur under the surface. And some patterns had to be broken and some profound understanding had to take place there, there were a lot of changes that have taken place within both characters at a very like profound, you know, DNA level. And now that it's happening, it's go time. <laughs> it's just seriously go time. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Hey, Alana. Sure. I could do Libra next for sure. All right, you guys take care. Thank you everybody for being here. Thanks for hanging out with me. All right. I'll see you guys again shortly. Bye.